In Jujutsu Kaisen, Tsukuna is meant to be the strongest sorcerer of all time, but chapter 229 of the manga caused the internet to turn against him, with many people labelling him as a fraud. That's why for this video, I've brought in two of the best Jujutsu Kaisen YouTubers, Zonin and DJ Miles, to help me figure out whether the fraud allegations are true. Alright, so to start things off, I guess the first question we need to ask is, what do you guys think it means for him to be a fraud and why would he be one? I think this narrative mostly came from refugees from my hero, right? Because like the community, uh, the Jujutsu Kaisen community has grown so much over the last couple weeks. And I mean, mainly it's because Gojo has been unsealed, of course. But I also feel like since my hero has been falling off, a lot of that community has come over to Jujutsu Kaisen because it's like the new hotness. Because like, if you look on Twitter, like during the prime time of like chapters and when the leaks are getting released, it is so similar to what the My Hero community was like. And it was never like that before. So I think it's really just this influx of like new, like fair weather fans, to be honest, putting like the clown wig on Sukuna and saying that, you know, he's like a fraud or whatever. Like fraud just kind of has lost its meaning at this point. It's like, if you don't do what I like, then you're a fraud. That's essentially what it's become. But going back to the original question, why they say Sukuna is a fraud is because he's overcoming Gojo with using abilities and means that otherwise aren't inherent to him. And now that he has been hit with infinite void, now he summoned Maharaga to take on uh, Gojo, which is like, you know, end game essentially. Like it's really hard to overcome that. So now that he has put Gojo in like this almost checkmate position, I guess they're just upset about it. Cause it's like, oh, Maharaga isn't inherently yours. So that means you're a fraud. You needed him to save you and you can't win otherwise. And it's just nonsense to me. I think this whole fraud allegation is coming from a pure power scaling thing right like if we look at sukuna no 10 shadows uh he was the one who said from episode one right or the first chapter i can defeat you if i got my 20 fingers right that's it yeah. point blank you know so now he's overly prepared and you know megami's body has the 10 shadows most likely going to use yozuru's gift at some point right yeah for sure so now it's kind of hard to have that what if scenario because the truth of the matter is we're not going to get that it's not like sakuna by himself is going to face gojo and you know this what if scenario of, of the clash of the two titans it's a bit diluted and i think that's where people are feeling kind of iffy about it but you know the counter argument memes aside it's like well did any of you guys think he wasn't going to use every arsenal in his bag of tricks Right. So he's overly prepared uh, for better and for worse. And Maharaga is just one of those things, um, you know, in his, uh, you know, in his arsenal. I was wondering, do you think that in the last chapter, he was almost letting Gojo beat him in a way just to build up this moment? I think that the way when we look at the fight from the get uh, from the beginning to where it is now. Yeah, it seems like all of this was kind of luring him in, even at the risk, right? Like him taking the riskier option, as Gojo mentioned, to be damaged for Maharaga to just basically adapt to all of this. Yeah. Um, now, it's yet to be determined what his curse technique is and whether that was enough to, you know, uh, defeat Gojo by himself. But regardless, it doesn't matter because that's not the narrative we're getting now. Yeah, that question right there is where it all comes back to. Like, could he have beaten Gojo if... Ten Shadows wasn't involved at all. Like, could he have done it? I mean, you make the point that he hasn't shown his full curse technique, which is valid because obviously he has the fire and probably other stuff as well. Like, we don't know what's in his black box. Like, he could have so many more moves up his sleeves that we've never seen before. So in theory, yeah, he might have still beaten Gojo even without Ten Shadows. But the fact he's gone down this road, it implies that at the very least, Maharaga is easier to beat Gojo than using Tsukuna's own technique. So... If Maharaga wasn't in the equation, would he have still won? It's, it's a question that is hard to answer at this point, isn't it? I think he can, for sure, because he's already beating him. Like, he was beating Gojo without using the Ten Shadows for most of the fight. So, if he was, if he didn't have the Ten Shadows, and let's say he was, like, still in Yuji's body or something, hmm. it would have been more difficult, for sure, but I do think that he could have defeated him, because he's just better than him. He's outplaying him in, like, most of this match. 
And I guess people just don't like that because there's more Gojo fans, I guess. Sukuna has got most of the small wins up until this point. But as a counter to that, I would say that Gojo, he's been learning as the fight's been going on. Because remember, like when his domain got destroyed by the open barrier, like he was taken by surprise. He didn't expect that to happen. And so like a bunch of his domain expansions after that, you know, the big one, the small one, that's just him tinkering, like figuring out what exactly Sukuna can do and how he can counter it. So I wouldn't say that's Sukuna dominating Gojo. That's just Gojo trying to learn, like how exactly am I going to overcome this? Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's interesting looking at the fight where I think Sukuna overall is winning prior to Maharaga, right? But the feats that Gojo has done on the on the pushback has been definitely more impressive. Because a lot of people were questioning, you know, that, that first time when he was caught in the, the domain expansion. And I still hope they address this. Why didn't anyone tell Gojo about the barrierless domain in the first place? Like this, I, I really need that answered. Because if it's not answered, it, it I don't know. I don't want to say it's a bit sloppy, but... Well, I think they could have even told him because even when like Kenjaku did it and when Sukuna did it last time, when they did that, no one else had a domain inside that open barrier. So they didn't even know what would happen, really. Mm -hmm. So even if they did tell him, would he have known that it would be destroyed from the outside? It's impossible to say because, yeah, we've, we've literally never seen it. Yeah, yeah. And this might be a little bit of a weird analogy, but I feel like the way the story is going now, even with Gojo still being on uh, on the defense, look, this is going to be like, a, like wrestling, right? Y you can't have two of the biggest you know, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man or whoever, right, be one-sided. So at some point, even if Gojo's looking bad and Sukuna is winning, you know, uh, twirling his evil mustache, I think Gojo's still going to come out and do something extremely impressive, defeating Maharaga or something else to that nature. Uh, and regardless of Sukuna using his real curse technique to get Gojo, yeah, maybe Sukuna could have beat him without the Ten Shadows, but... We're not going to know that because he had to use it. And that was basically the equalizer or the deciding factor in all of this when it's said and done. Yeah, it's just kind of, in a way, it's just disappointing that we'll never know for sure if he would have won. Um, but in a way, I, I guess this is cooler, though, like seeing Maharaga versus Gojo. I don't really think we would have got that otherwise because I, I don't think Megami and Gojo would have ever been fighting for any reason. So this is really the only way we were going to get that. So... I guess it's worth it. Would you say it's worth it just to see this? 100%. Uh, but also hmm. going back to like Sukuna defeating him otherwise, it's like a lot of, uh, another thing that like these fraud people don't acknowledge is that Sukuna is at a disadvantage from the start. He always has been because he's never in his true body, never has 20 fingers, is never like in his like complete comfort zone the way that Gojo is. So if he was like full power 20 fingers with the four arms in his normal body he'd probably have an easier time defeating gojo to be honest but the fact that he's always in somebody else's body not at full power having to use their power set and he's still winning i don't want to say dominating but he's like playing around him and winning and everything and going back to what you were saying about gojo getting the bigger wins i don't think he has at all like him just blasting Sukuna with a red or whatever. We don't even see it. Or stabbing Sukuna in the previous chapter. I think that's because Sukuna wanted him to do that. Like he wanted to get hit with Limitless Void. He wanted him to hit him with whatever he's doing to make him think that he has the advantage here. Because it even goes back to chapter 228 when like Gojo's questioning like, yeah, he's using all of the abilities granted by his domain. But like, why isn't he using the 10 Shadows, specifically Maharaga? It's because he was waiting. He always had the Dharma Chakra like in the shadows or whatever outside of Gojo's grasp. I mean, I guess he could see it with the six eyes, but he was like adapting to things the whole time. This is all just like one calculated thing to just break down Gojo one piece at a time because he knew that he was eventually going to use Limitless Void. And once he got hit with it, it was pretty much game over at that point. I mean, I don't think Gojo is like completely defeated, of course. I'm sure he still has some tricks up his sleeve. But anyway, I'm just trying to say... Sukuna is not a fraud. If anything, Gojo is a fraud. He was like born with a silver <laughs> spoon in his yeah. mouth. Gojo is a fraud because he's like, he's the embodiment of like the rich, talented, like good looking, like narcissist kid that like we grew up with. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's essentially that. So I, I, I think the better question is now, you know, is he going to get a second awakening then? Would you want a second awakening from Gojo? 
The thing is, if Sukun has been using the wheel since the very beginning, then that means he's adapted to literally everything Gojo can do, like purple, red, anything Gojo can do, he's adapted to it. So if Gojo doesn't have another awakening, he's dead. So um, it would be interesting to see maybe like an open barrier from Gojo. Maybe that would make a difference. You, you know what I'm thinking might happen? Do you, do you guys remember in like Dragon Ball Super when like Goku went Ultra Instinct against Jiren and like he basically beat Jiren and then just as he's about to deal the finishing blow, he collapses from exhaustion and he just like, it hits him, right? Oh, I actually, oh. yeah, I can see that happen. I think that might happen because the nosebleed was the first hint of that. I feel like whatever's about to happen, he he's going to beat Maharaga somehow by awakening something or doing the maximum. And just when it looks like he's about to win, it just hits him. And he's like the exhaustion of using his curse technique. You know, how many domain expansions has he done? Like five at this point. Um, yeah. So yeah. And probably six soon in like next couple chapters. So yeah, I think that could happen. Like six domain expansions back to back, literally breaking the world record here. And then just collapses after that as soon as he's about to beat um, Sukuna. So I think if that happens, I'm, we'll definitely get more Sukun and Fraud allegations for sure. Um, but but I think, yeah, that's that's definitely possible. So there's one thing I want to make a real side tangent, and it's with Kashimo, right? Because I think I saw a creator talk about, you know how Gege is very influenced with the whole Buddhism and Hinduism and all that stuff. Yeah. And they were basically saying Kashimo's like final attack is based off of this whole buddhism mythology or whatever where the final attack i guess was catered toward the buddhist analogy of what sukuna is and that one final attack like in buddhist history or whatever i'm butchering it but that attack was actually specifically done at the maharaga equivalent so now i wonder if we get a 2v1 with sukuna maharaga versus gojo next chapter or this is where kashima was like you know what i'm just jumping in don't stop me, you know? And now we get some crazy 2v2 action or Kashimo somehow intervenes and his final attack somehow gets designated toward Maharaga so Gojo can face off against Sukuna. And then at this point, now the, the fraud <laughs> the fraud allegations is going to be pinned on both sides because now this isn't a 1v1 anymore. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Kashimo's, his curse technique, his like one-time curse technique, that definitely has to come into play at, at, against Sukuna in some way. Um, because if it's, I mean, the whole reason why Kashimo saved that was specifically for Sukuna. Mm -hmm. So if we were to end the series with that never being a thing, would that be disappointing? I feel like maybe because it was kind of built up as this thing specifically that could take down Sukuna, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, guys, so just before we wrap up the video, I want to hear your final conclusions. Is Sukuna a fraud? Yes or no? We'll start with you, DJ Miles. What do you think? I don't think he's a fraud, but from the power scaling fandom, people will always consider him to be a fraud. And those what if videos are going to be done nonstop from now until the end of the series. Shonen? No, he he's he's at such a disadvantage and he's still winning. I don't in think like so, such a cool I, way. I take your point that like four arm Sukuna is a different beast. But if I had the choice, if I'm Sukuna, would I rather be four arm Sukuna or Sukuna with the 10 shadows plus my originally overpowered curse technique. Like, I feel like he's got the better end of the stick. To have 10 shadows on your side, plus cleave, dismantle, the fire, whatever else, I think like all of that is probably better than if he was just in his original form and that was it. I don't know. I mean, he just seems like he's, he, he's still not at full power regardless. You mean like the one finger that's still out there? Yeah. But didn't he compensate for that by eating, like, the, the head? The, he ate the head, but I don't think that replaces a finger because, like, this finger has, like, a part of his soul in it. Yeah, I don't know, but he seemed to think mm -hmm. so. I don't know exactly how it works. Have, have you guys heard the theory that the one finger that's out there, Nobra is going to come and, like, use resonance on it? Have you seen that one? Uh, dude, no. Nobra is dead. Dude, she's alive. She's alive. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Show me the body. Show me the body. <laughs> we did see it. <laughs> that dead ass corpse with that eye missing she's dead look i'm still a nobra believer okay they just give way too many indirect hints about like alluding to her to not bring her back look and if she's dead she's dead i'm just saying then why would they like just uh you know shuffle around the fact on whether or not she's dead you know i i think she's still coming back like i'm telling you like wwe style this is gonna be like some crazy calling game like appearance out of nowhere where all the good guys are about to lose and boom it's nobra with the eye patch coming and then to you hear 
you hear her music start playing and then she starts running out. <laughs> oh, man. The crowd is screaming. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, thank you for coming on the channel. And just in case anyone doesn't know who you are, do you want to just say a few quick words about what you do on your channel? Uh, yeah. So I'm a Chainsaw Man Jujutsu Kaisen content creator. And uh, yeah, you can find me talking about those two series. Don't watch my channel. Don't subscribe. Just subscribe to these guys. This reverse psychology. This isn't the first time I've seen you do that. <laughs> well, on that note, don't subscribe to me, guys. Wink, wink. <laughs> don't do it.